Hey guys, before we jump into today's video, just remember if you if you like free videos like this and you find them helpful, remember be sure to support us. Give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. That's the support we need to keep putting out videos like this on a weekly basis for you. And let's dive back into the video. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. In today's video, we are gonna talk about a seven week progression with a more intermediate athlete. Now, the point of today's video is to kind of show you a progression of a seven week progression, show you the improvements that are being made, and then really kind of have you understand how critical it is to have the right foundation and learn the right things in the beginning, because if you don't, they cause big time problems. And, and that's not a joke. So what you're gonna see in this video is you're gonna see how this athlete was really battling the things that he learned in the development phase of throwing that were gonna cause a limitation. They're gonna cause the ultimately to make it more and more difficult for this athlete to, to you know, kind of realize his real potential. So, so first, first things first is what we're gonna do is we're gonna look, right? What's a stand throw look like? And you're gonna notice how this athlete, when, they, when he does the stand throw, one, he kind of, he sets up, it's not bad. There's, there's decent weight, but you're gonna notice how he kind of winds down, right? He winds a low point, he kind of gets it up, and then he comes around. But look at the left shoulder, you see that pull? So this is because things that were addressed as they explained it. Now I always take everything with a, you know, with a grain of salt. Athletes interpret things. I explain things to athletes and then they say something and it's like the grapevine deal and they say something different than what I was said. So here's what was expressed. They were taught to lift and a lot of people teach this concept of lifting at the finish. And there's, a, there's an important point. I would agree that you, you want elevation but you want elevation from the hip and rotating hip, you don't want to be going up in the air because this is a perfect example. This athlete goes up in the air, and so now this athlete leaves the ground while he's still pulling, and that's gonna create a limitation in distance. You can't create that big, nasty pull that everybody wants to get the distance. Okay, so now, now, now here's where we talk about, when we're talking about all this stuff inside the chain reaction, I'm gonna to explain to the athlete what they're doing and I'm gonna to explain to them what they need to be doing. And that's what we do with our six pillar system. We're gonna break down pillar six, that's the delivery. We're gonna do five and six and then we're gonna move into something like this. This is a half turn, we're gonna go three, four, five, six. This is because this, this, this simple progression is really gonna expose how that athlete is moving and what we're looking for with our six pillars, do we see a systemic issue? That means, do we see this problem in pillar six, five, you know, four, three, two, and one, do we see the same problem? So here's this first full throw, and you're gonna see how this athlete kind of cuts across the ring a little bit, and so now what's the first objective? One, we've gotta teach him how the chain reaction works. We wanna set up and make sure we're setting up a more consistent wind because this is how you set up a consistent throw. You've seen number of videos we've put together, and so now here we start working on it. And what happens is when you're, when you're learning something new and you have an ingrained pattern, in this case, what he was doing was very subtle, but it was enough to create a limitation. You see how I'm over-exaggerating what we're teaching here is pillar two. How do we create maximum power? Think about it, we set up the, the chain reaction, we set up maximum power, those are the first two key things. And once those two things are done pretty right, a lot of things will fall into place. So what are you gonna see with this athlete? What does he do? He's trying to feel it. We're straightening out the line. You notice that his first week, things are kind of pulling more to the left. And again, so here we see in pillar three, or sorry, week three, again, we're getting a straighter, longer line and he's making good progress. But what starts to happen, pillar week four, now we're starting to get some things. He's trying to hit it harder, but what do we do when we get into week five? He starts to run into a regression. <clears throat> and so what happens? If you notice the difference between weeks three and four in weeks five, he starts to drop this hip again. This is what he was doing in week one. And this is what's so critical, like I've mentioned in this video, that if you are in the development stage, the beginning. Now, I would say anybody who is still, has an, is from zero to probably 160 plus feet, you're in the development stage. You're still learning critical things. You're just doing more fundamentals correctly to throw further distance, 160, 170 you know, 180, 190. When you start getting over 180 to 200 feet, you're doing very specific things, very 
starting to do them well and you're broaching into advanced movement. Now, here you see that hip falling off. So that means that pillar two, that changed again here in week five. And now he goes back to some of his old habits. But here's you go, you see the athlete, when he falls in, he under rotates in the middle, the upper body's speeding up, and now the upper body, here's that habit we saw in week one. And you can see how everything's kind of pulling this way again. But the good news is, is we kind of said, okay, let's look at the, let's look at the focus. And now we see back in week six, we're gonna see, okay, we're starting to move again, and now we're working on some non-reverses, and we're trying to straighten it out, and now we're seeing the implement go further again, right? And he's just like slowing things down, taking it easy, and the distances are coming back, and we start to see some PRs. So now let's look at it frame by frame. Here's week one, obviously, and here's week seven, and these are the subtle things that make a difference. Notice the difference in the length, the height of the discus, the orbit. Look at the hips and the shoulders. Look at the difference here. Okay, and look at the difference here, right? So you see everything starts to come around. Look at the difference in the sweep, wider. He's more on top, he's moving around. We're seeing a better position of the arms, right? It's all these little, these little details that are gonna make a big difference. And so now you notice here again, whereas week five where he was struggling, he was landing where the foot was pointing there and it was flat, now he's staying here. Here he actually was doing you know, decent, but look at how the arm kind of cuts. And again, there's some advanced throwers out there in the world who kind of open the arm, but they don't open the chest. And you're gonna see how when we get here, right? You see how we're starting to see a longer position, discus is up high. And here you're gonna notice he's already starting to throw with the upper body. So you see how everything's gonna pull. And that's why you're gonna see kind of that pull around. Now he does tend to block right here, but you see how on the stand throw, it was here. So what does that translate to? He blocks, but he's pulling around. And in here, you still see some of that old habit, right? It's not entirely gone, but we've made a lot of good progress. And so that is kind of the lesson of today's video. You have to understand that you have to have a structure and sometimes if your foundation wasn't set up the most optimally or the way you may have learned it, it's really critical to understand exactly what's supposed to be happening mechanically so that you can put together better throws. Because as you can see, this is a better, you know, much better technical positions here. Now the key would be to continue to work these patterns, but overriding foundation or development based training that you learned that was wrong is such a nightmare. You got to learn it right the first time or you're going to spend weeks and weeks and months and oftentimes you will spend years correcting what was learned incorrectly. So keep that in mind. Now remember for you guys out there that would like to dig more information, remember inside our throwing chain reaction system, we go through all this. We break down the six pillars of throw. We break down each pillar into multiple drills. We have our throwing progressions that are accompanied by drills. So remember guys, you just can't cheat physics. Throwing is one of those things. It's technical, it's complex. It can be simplified. And that's what we do with this inside the throwing chain reaction. And remember, um, <clears throat> if you would like more information on this, be sure to check out the link in below. Check out our throwing camps our online coaching options, all those things, video analysis, all those things are available. So remember guys, we really look forward to your support. Easiest way to support us, if you'd like to continue to see videos like this, be sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications, and that's how we can continue to put out free videos like this each week. Okay guys, thanks so much. See you on the next video.